Um, we're in section 4.6, examples 3 and 4. So we're going to look at sum and difference for tangent. So technically, you could get by without ever using these formulas, because if I wanted to find the tangent of x1 plus x2, I could use the formula below, or I could do sine of x1 plus x2 over cosine of x1 plus x2. And so you would just use these identities and then divide. So up to you, more than one way to get the same result. But if we want to try the tangent identities, let's try them out for these examples. So we want to find tangent of 11 pi over 12. So 11 pi over 12 is an unknown angle in terms of our unit circle. So I'm going to try to rewrite 11 pi over 12 as a sum of two angles that we know. So 11 could be like 7 pi plus 4 pi over 12. Um, that's not that helpful, right, because 7 over 12 doesn't simplify to something we know. So we want to kind of guess and check until we find something that works. So it might take a while, and that's okay. Um, but one thing I notice here is 8 pi plus 12, and then 8 plus 3 is 11, so 3 pi plus 12. And this is helpful because they both simplify. So 8 and 12 are divisible by 4, so we get 2 over 3. And then 3 and 12, we get 1 and 4, so pi over 4. And these are both angles that we know on the unit circle. So that's why this is helpful. So let's go ahead and um, plug into the formula, and then we'll um, find the values for each of those. So I'm just going to plug in. So we're going to plug in 2 pi over 3 for my x1, and we're going to plug in pi over 4 for my x2. Right? We can't split up tangent. We can't say tangent of 2 pi over 3 plus tangent of pi over 4. Um, operations don't work like that. We have to use an identity. So we're going to say we have tangent of 2 pi over 3 plus tangent of pi over 4. I'm just using the given identity all over 1 minus tangent of 2 pi over 3 times tangent of pi over 4. And we'll get our unit circle ready so we can find these values. So let's see. Let's do pi over 2 pi over 3 first. So we have pi over 3, 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 is in that second quadrant. And then let's see, we'll draw a triangle. So the short side, if we don't remember, is 1 half. It'll be negative 1 half because we're on the left side. And then the long side is root 3 over 2. And it's positive because we're going up. And then we might remember that tangent is just y over x. So tangent of 2 pi over 3 will be root 3 over 2 over negative 1 half or negative root 3. So we'll go ahead and plug in negative root 3. For the tangent of 2 pi over 3. And then let's find tangent of pi over 4. Pi over 4 is in the first quadrant. That's the triangle where the sides are the same. So when they're the same, we may or may not remember, but that's root 2 and root 2. Root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. That's the medium size. And so then when I do that for tangent, when we divide, we just get 1, right? So tangent of pi over 4, root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2 is 1. So then we'll do plus 1, and then we'll do times 1 on the bottom. And then we'll go ahead and simplify this. And that'll be the value of tangent of 11 pi over 12. So we get negative root 3 plus 1 on top. And then on bottom, it looks like we get 1 plus root 3. And you can just leave the answer like this. Um, I might change the order. It looks a little nicer. 1 minus root 3 over 1 plus root 3. You could rationalize the denominator, but this is totally fine as is. So that would be the value of tangent 11 pi over 12. And if you didn't want to use this identity, you could go back again and use the sine and cosine identities and then just divide and you should end up here. Just, there's, always, there's a lot of routes with trig, so there's often more than one way to get the answer. So let's use the sum and difference formulas to find cosine um, of 2x. 
So we have identities for cosine of 2x, but if we rewrite it as cosine of x plus x, we can use the sum identities. So if you go back a couple pages, you find that cosine of x1 plus x2 equals cosine of x1 times cosine of x2 and then minus sine of x1 times sine of x2. So maybe we're not memorizing these, but we could maybe reference it. So this is an identity. So let's see. Let's um, find cosine of 2x using this identity. So instead of saying cosine of 2x, I'm going to write it as cosine of x plus x because that's what's going to allow me to use the sum identity. This isn't the only way to find cosine of 2x. Um, we'll see in a second we have identities for cosine of 2x. Um, but to find these identities, we can use cosine of x plus x. So let's see. We will plug in x for x1. And then we'll just happen to also plug in x for x2. And then we'll have new identities for cosine of 2x. So cosine of x times cosine of x minus sine of x, sine of x. And you'll see I plugged in x for both x1 and x2. And this will simplify to cosine squared minus sine squared. And that is one identity for cosine of 2x. There are two more. Um, so we might remember that cosine squared um, plus sine squared is 1. So we can rewrite, we can subtract sine squared. So cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. Or we could subtract cosine and say sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. And so we can plug both of those in to write this in two different forms. So let's check that out. So another form, we could say cosine of 2x. I'm going to go ahead and replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. And then another sine squared from the second one. So another identity for cosine of 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared. So this one ends up having a lot of identities. And they'll all end up working. Sometimes one is better than another. We'll check that out later. And then the last option is maybe I replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. So we'll get cosine of 2x is cosine squared x. And then instead of sine squared, we're going to plug all that in. 1 minus cosine squared x. And we'll distribute cosine squared minus 1 plus cosine squared. And so our final option for cosine of 2x will be 2 cosine squared minus 1. And so depending if we have sine or cosine, maybe this one or this one could be more useful. So you'll see these identities on the next page. And then let's derive um, sine and cosine really quickly, or sine and tangent really quickly, and then we'll have new identities to reference below. So we can do the same idea for sine. So sine of 2x, we'll have an identity in a second, but we can derive it from these sum identities. So 2x would be x plus x. So sine of 2x is sine of x plus x. And you can go back a couple pages and we learned the identity sine of x1 plus x2 is what? Sine of x1, again, maybe not memorizing, but you could reference it. Cosine of x2 plus cosine of x1 times sine of x2. So it's a little bit different than the cosine one, but it's pretty similar. So sine of 2x, we are just going to replace x1 with x. And we're just going to also replace x2 with x. So they just both happen to be the same angle, and that's OK. So we get sine of x times cosine of x plus cosine of x times sine of x, which even though they're in the reverse order, these are the same term, right? It's like 3 times 5, 5 times 3. So sine of 2x 
is just 2 sine x times cosine x. So only one identity for sine of 2x. You'll see that below as well. So we found the first three. We just found the fourth one. And then tangent of 2x is a little bit harder to derive. Um, you can either derive the formula or for tangent of 2x if you prefer. Just like the earlier example, you could just use sine of 2x over cosine of 2x. Sometimes I find that easier than the tangent identities is just to use sine and cosine. And those are called our double angle formulas. So we will practice them in the next video.